keeping an eye on imaging. Discussion and commentary based on articles from Jack Cardiovascular Imaging. Hello, I'm Dr. Greg Hunley, and on behalf of Jack Imaging, I want to welcome you today. Today we have Dr. Hugo Katos from Heidelberg, Germany, who's going to speak to us about a new application in cardiovascular magnetic resonance imaging in which he uses a new form of dobutamine stress testing to diagnose inducible ischemia. Dr. Katos, welcome. And could you tell us a little bit about your new recently published study? Well, first I would like to thank for the opportunity to present our data and also for the publication in Czech Cardiovascular Imaging. Very briefly to the background, uh, so the work actually is being done by my co-worker, Dr. Korosoklu and uh, Neil Osman. Both have uh, great interest in improving methodologies for detection of regional wall motion abnormalities. And Neil Osman has, from John Hopkins, has developed a software where he can in color code the strain of myocardial, of the myocardium. And by this color coding improves visualization and also quantification of wall motion abnormalities. And with this technology, with the SENC technology, uh, they could show that we, in, in patients with coronary artery disease, you have a higher precision in predicting myocardial ischemia by this technique. Now with the present work, say we went forward and, and tested then when we use less intensive dopamine stress test, can we then have the same precision as with full dose dobutamine stress testing and having less risk associated with, with that procedure first? And second, if we go to full dose dobutamine and use the same uh, technology, do we identify more patients with coronary artery disease? So the study then included 80 patients uh, which underwent cardiovascular MRI imaging and all patients afterwards within eight, eight uh, days underwent coronary angiography and uh, the coronary angiograms were quantified as a standard uh, methodology. And it turned out that uh, those patients having significant coronary artery disease were 46 patients. And from these 46 patients, 45 were correctly identified by full dose dopamine stress testing using uh, the SANC technology. However, it was only 39 when one uses conventional wall motion an an analysis. And importantly, when one goes to the 20 microgram uh, per kilogram dobutamine dose, uh, it turned out that one has the same sensitivity as we fool those uh, dopamine stress testing when using conventional wall motion an abnormalities. So the data indicate by the same technology, one does have more precision and more sensitivity for the detection of coronary artery disease, and that may translate to more patient safety and, and uh, more uh, precision in diagnostic testing. So it sounds like you had two new important features. The first being a more rapid test. You could identify uh, abnormalities at a lower dose of dobutamine. Right. And the second is a quantitative measure that would facilitate uh, physicians in interpreting the tests, where before right. they might not be able to recognize the wall motion yeah. abnormalities. What patient populations do you think this will be useful for? And then what do you see are limitations to advancing this technology out into clinical practice? Well, we, we, the study population was a selected group of patients uh, with an intermediate risk uh, features. There were no patients with previous myocardial infarction since we uh, selected for uh, patients without wall motion abnormalities. Uh, so the group of patients will be those with intermediate risk features uh, to be identified by that technology. The second point is um, what is the translation sent to, to clinical practice and what are the limitations. So right now it still is, is a, a technology which is not included in, in the process of MRI imaging, so it's a post-processing procedure. So with a faster SANC technology, we hope then to really have online uh, data and, and identify online those which have already a uh, wall motion abnormality. And the most sensitive uh, measure was actually not strain, but strain rate, uh, which uh, 
turned out to be more sensitive than strain. So with strain weight, we could hopefully have then included in, in the online analysis a more, more faster and more precise testing. Dr. Katas, I want to thank you very much for sharing your time with us and for this very informative study. Okay. Uh, it sounds like you'll be working uh, with uh, both small and larger industry to help move this into right. clinical practice. And this new innovation could be very helpful for managing patients with cardiovascular disease as we look for new technologies to identify those uh, at risk of cardiovascular events. Thank you very much. You're welcome.